Renfield, wake up, Renfield. It's time to start the show, Rat Breath. You, you can see me? I'm the voice of Renfield's head. The voice of reason. At least I used to live in his head. But, but with all the other voices, it became too crowded in there. So I moved out and became the voice of Renfield's beard. Yeah, that's right. The voice of reason moved out of Renfield's head. That explains a lot, doesn't it? <laughs> anyway, it looks like Renfield's asleep. Uh, so, I'll start the show for him. Uh, uh, you're watching Transylvania tonight with Countess Korea and Renfield's master Drac. Uh, now, if you'll excuse me, I have some work to get done. Uh, uh, Renfield, uh, uh, don't eat the yellow snow. <laughs> uh, 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 don't chew used bubble gum you found on the street. <laughs> uh, 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 it's no good anyway. I'm Countess Carita, and welcome to Transylvania Tonight. But I guess you already know that, don't you? We have a great show for you tonight. But I guess you already know that, too. You know, you're always free to stop in here at the castle for a quick bite anytime you want. And we do encourage you to stop in anytime you can for a quick bite, because it gives our peasants a break. Anyway, to tell you more about tonight's fantastic show, is the big biter with a receding hairline, my very own Dennis Drac. Oh, thanks, honey Beth. Hi there, how you doing? It's good to see you. Did you hear what Carita said? She said, I was the big biter of the Borgo Pass with the receding hairline. I mean, come on, what do you think? Is it really that obvious, you know? Should I start wearing a hat? Or maybe, you know, paint my scalp with that spray stuff? You think I should do that? And what did she mean by big biter? You know, do I have an extreme overbite or something? Huh? Do I? I've had work done. <laughs> and you know, just when my self-esteem was pretty good tonight, you know? And then she has to do that. Oh well. Let's start the show while I go off and lick my wounds. <laughs> okay? Not even close to being live from the Borgo Pass, it's Transylvania Tonight with your hosts, that award-winning King of the Vampires, Drac, and Countess Karita, the darling of the undead. Join Drac and Karita for tonight's feature film, Alfred Hitchcock's Jamaica Inn. I'm Drac. She's Countess Karita. And welcome to Transylvania tonight. <laughs> we have a great show for you tonight. Oh, we sure do. With a great movie that's all about pirates. Well, they're kind of pirates. More like land pirates. It stars Charles Lawton, Maureen O'Hara, and Robert Newton. It's called Jamaica Inn. And it was directed by the master himself, Alfred Hitchcock. In fact, this 1939 film was the last movie that Hitchcock made before he expatriated to America to make movies. So let's get to it right now. Here it is from 1939, Charles Lawton, Maureen O'Hara, and Robert Newton in Alfred Hitchcock's Jamaica Inn. Dennis? Yeah, my little nightshade. You've been around for centuries. Yeah. Were you ever a pirate? 
Well, I did steal a woman's heart once on a Caribbean cruise. You had an affair on a cruise ship? No! I stole her heart. Oh. It's up on my desk. I use it as a paperweight. Hmm. Yeah. By the way, mm -hmm. you know where most of the pirates came from, right? No, where? Pennsylvania. Pennsylvania? Yeah, sure. They called them the Pittsburgh Pirates. Start the movie.
I don't like it. I don't like it at all. That place gives me the creeps. Yeah. That place, Jamaica Inn, has got a bad name. It's not healthy, that's why. There's queer things goes on there. Eh? Queer things. I won't stop there, not if she were to offer me double fare. Is Jamaica Inn on this road? and take me back at once. You better try Squire Pengullens instead. They say he's partial to young women. Here's your box. I think we owe a toast to Sir Humphrey. Sir Humphrey? Eh? What? Jovia. Pengallon. Thank you. 
might have asked you to drink the health of his brand new majesty, George the Fourth, but I forgot. Fact is, I haven't been on speaking terms for years with a fat fool. You were much in his company at one time, I think, Sir Humphrey? Yes, when Charlie Fox and Sheridan would be there with him in the pavilion at Brighton. In those days, he was still a gentleman. Now he's nothing but a painted bag of maraschino and plum pudding, Lord George. Buzz the Madeira. Last summer, we made a tour of the lakes. Which lake do you admire the most, Sir Humphrey? Chadwick! Which lake did I admire the most? Windermere, sir. Windermere. It is very beautiful. Why not a toast to beauty, Sir Humphrey? Why not? Uh, Chadwick, my figurine, I need inspiration to get. Oh, well, there's beauty. But it's not alive. More alive than half the people here. Look at him, what? <laughs> if you want to see beauty alive, Chadwick! Ask Sam how long Nancy is going to be. Nancy? The most beautiful creature west of Exeter. You see, Lady Beston, that's why he stays here and never comes to London anymore. He keeps a girl here, the monster. <laughs> then I would prefer not to make her acquaintance. No, 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 I'm curious. Yes, by Jove. Have her in, Pengallon. Here she is. My exquisite Nancy. Brought me in a hundred guineas yesterday. You ran away with a Bodmin steeple chase, didn't you, Vidaire? Chadwick, what's that? It's a woman, sir. Well, don't argue with your women when I'm entertaining company. I tell you, the coachman left me stranded. Ask your master to lend me a horse and trap. Let's have a look at her. Ringwood, when she's 20 to 1 in guineas, she's ugly. Huh? I'll take you. Would you uh, oblige me by taking off that coat a moment? Why should I? I have a wager here. Always respect a wager. Would you allow me? It's your exquisite shape, too. My dear, you're a beauty. Ringwood, you've won. Here. Oh, dear, I my She walks in beauty like the night. Cloudless climes and starry skies. Hmm? And all that's best of dark and bright meet in her aspect. And her eyes. Thank you, sir. But I didn't come for poetry, but for a horse. A horse? Be worthy of Lord Baron's poetry. We shall have the horse. My um, name is Sir Humphrey Pengallon. I'm Squire of Pengallon and uh, Justice of the Peace. I'm Mary Yellen from Ireland. And you're going where? To Jamaica Inn. To Jamaica Inn? You, uh, you can't go there. Why not? Um, Sam! This young lady wants to know why she can't go to Jamaica Inn. Will you tell her? Oh, very rough there, miss. No place for a young lady. See, even Sam knows that. No. Better stay here. No, of course not. <laughs> I've come all the way from Ireland alone because I've nobody there now. Your parents? I'm going to Jamaica Inn because my Aunt Patience is there. What a lovely horse. Yeah. Could you uh, ride her? Yes, of course. I've been riding since I was a child. Well, you shall ride her to uh, the inn. Hmm? Thank you. Oh, but I've got a box outside. Oh, um, I'll take the box and conduct you myself to uh, your relative. Sam, saddle the bay as well. Chadwick! Chadwick, this is Miss Mary Yellen, who's uh, going to Jamaica Inn. So she said, sir, I, I don't understand. I've never understood anything, Chadwick, so why be surprised at yourself? Now, will you try to understand this? Miss Yellen is my friend. She returns here at any time, admit her at once, and see that she has everything she requires. Yes, sir, Humphrey. And uh, give me my uh, great coat and muffler. Uh, and a thick scarf for this lady. Uh, pardon me, uh, sir, excuse me. Uh, Chadwick, um, I'll have some hot brandy when I come back, and... Uh, you see that they've got a warming pan in the bed? Very good, Sir Humphrey. If you will wait a moment, miss, I'll get the scarf. But I really don't need it.
If I can be of any service, please command me. Remember, I'm Pengallan. This is Pengallan land. Don't forget now. No, I won't. Good night, uh, Miss uh, Yellen. Good night, Sir Humphrey. Who's there? What do you want? Does Mrs. Patience Merlin live here? She might, and she might not. Depending on your business. I'm her niece from Ireland. You must have heard. I'm coming to live with my aunt and uncle. What? What put that in your head? Who told you so, eh? That's my business. Go and tell your master I'm here. <laughs> Aren't you going to give me a kiss first? You'll... You'll suffer for this when my uncle's told of it. I have you turned out of here. You'll see. Oh, you wouldn't be hard on us, ma'am. You see, your aunt had missed me. Get out of my way, I... Correct. Entirely correct. I'm your aunt's loving husband. Your great big uncle, Joss. Come on. Who's there? There we are. Aunt Patience. Oh, Mary. Mary, my sister's Mary. You know me then, Aunt Patience? Yes, my dear, yes. You're so like your mother. When I heard your voice at first, I thought it was hers. And, and then when I saw you, I thought for the moment. She said you were expecting her to stay. No, Joss, no. But I wrote to you telling you everything. Nothing came. You wrote. Mary, you're in black. Yes. Mother died three weeks ago today. Well, have a drink. How did it happen? She hadn't been well, but she said she must leave her bed and work. You know how Mother was. Patience, don't stand there yappering, woman. Get the girl's box inside. Yes, yes, Joss. No, no, Aunt Patience, let me. Easy, easy. Your new uncle's very particular. He's not the sort to let lovely ladies spoil themselves with rough work. He knows different as Joss. Lively with it, Patience, my dear. I'll take this end. No, I can manage it. It just isn't heavy, Mary. Truly, it doesn't matter. You ought to be ashamed of yourself, you <laughs> Mary. <laughs> Mary, don't say it. Oh, I've had pretty anything. women pay me compliments before. Stand clear there. There. Oh, Mary's a little bit sour tonight, but bless you, the best of us can't be sweet-tempered on an empty belly. Fill it up for her. Oh, yes, I'll get her something to eat. Mary, if you'll come with me. I won't be a minute if you'll sit down and rest. I'll set the table. No, 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 no. You'll be tired after your long journey. I'm not. Where's the cloth and supper things? Over there in the middle drawer. <laughs> it's nothing. Oh, listen, late customers in the parlor. They'll be going soon, no doubt. Shut that gap! Keep it quiet. You see, boys, we've got a visitor. Harry told us. She's a neat piece from what I've seen of her. Very neat. That's all you think of. Women. Vanities of the flesh. Following petticoats along the path to everlasting corruption. Salvation's <laughs> off again. Ah, uh, you can laugh now. But you'll sing a different tune when you're roasting in the consuming fire that's waiting for all of us. Me included. Where are you going, Harry? 
pay me respects. She's not partial to your sort, Harry. What about me and me new lace caps? <laughs> Anything in mind that way yourself? Well, I hadn't given the matter a thought, but I might. <laughs> I said I might, Harry. All right, Joss. Added to which, she's my wife's niece from Ireland. Why didn't you say that before? <laughs> my business, Harry, my business. I knew a girl once, come from Ireland. Talk funny, she did like a foreigner. But it was all right. I'm not what you expected, am I? I was only a child when you went away, on Patience. I can only just remember you, that's all. And what was I like then? You were beautiful. Was I? Yes, I suppose I was. No doubt your mother's told you all about me. You're thinking I'm paid out for leaving home, for running away. No, I'm Well, you're wrong. wrong. Joss has been a good husband to me. There's nothing I'd change even if I could. It's hard work and it's risky work. It's work we'll rot in chains for one day, all in a neat row. And what do we get out of it? Next to nothing. <laughs> Why, a man's share don't come to enough to hold body and soul together. That last break didn't bring in what it should have. That's what I said. That's what you say. I know, that's what Sidney said. So you've been yapping, eh? No, no, no Mr. Merlin, I Showing saw you. off your arithmetic, eh? Yeah. Doing pretty sums for poor lads that can't read nor reckon. No, no! You're out to list the goods. Not set a price on them. Just a minute, Joss. I told him the last haul didn't fetch a quarter of what it should have done. Oh, did, eh? Reckoning by our share of it. Maybe you're not getting the right price for the stuff. Maybe there's a leak somewhere. You're looking thoughtful, Harry. Perhaps you'll give us the benefit of your sentiments, if any. About this leak, I think the word is. If you've a notion in your mind, Harry, don't be bashful. Spit it out. We'd be glad to listen. I wouldn't know about that, Joss. Well, perhaps I would. Supposing there is a leak, and supposing it happens before the goods get to the end, do you follow me? Some absent-minded chap might mislay a piece or two, in a manner of speaking. On the way up from the wreck, have you ever thought of that? How long have you been with me, Harry? A matter of five years, Joss. Salvation? We've been lost souls together for two years and seven months, Joss. Sydney? Almost two and a half years, Mr. Merlin. Dandy? See, now, I was carrying on with a bit in Penzance around that time. Here she is, Annie. That makes it four years, Joss. And you? Well, I'll tell them for you. Mr. Treherne has been with us the enormous time of two months. Eight weeks. Fifty-six days. How's that for arithmetic? What do you say to that, Mr. Treherne? Joss. Clear out! Joss, please. Why, what's wrong? Joss, Mary's just told me. She came to the inn with Squire Pingallon. He asked her why she was coming here and about us. And see, he's a magistrate, I thought. Josh, you don't think he's found out anything? What's this about Sir Humphrey, eh? How did you come to meet him? Why, I called on him. The coach took me a long way past here, so I went to the house for help. Sir Humphrey was very kind and most obliging. He knows how to behave towards a woman. He even lent me a horse to ride here, one that won him a hundred guineas in the county steeplechase. We didn't get the all we hoped for tonight, sir. There was a full gale blowing down there, and the ship broke clean into it.
Get a pair of scissors, Merlin. Yes. Why did you leave this blood on? What do you think we're conducting? A slaughterhouse? Cut it off. Well, there were so many of them come tumbling in. It was proper hard butcher's works. Well, what have they to live for? Poor scum, you were right to put them out of their misery. Look at this exquisite stuff. Worth the miserable lives of a hundred rum-rotten sailors, perfection of its own kind. That's all that matters, Merlin, whatever is perfect of its kind. I transport all the riffraff in Bristol to Botany Bay to save one beautiful woman a single headache. Something you don't understand, never will. Because you're neither a philosopher nor a gentleman. No, sir. But you made sudden. No survivors. Certain sure, sir. And I'm sorry about that girl, Mary, sir. We didn't know she was coming. But she'd be no harm. I'll get away myself first thing in the morning. Make up the fire. It's cold in here. Yes. Give me a drink. Yes. Didn't expect you so soon, sir, before I put the light in the window. Man's a fool to stare out in a night like this. Taking a bit of a risk, wasn't it, Sir Humphrey, coming here before I got patience and the men out of the way? Everything's a risk. This girl, Mary, not without character, mind of her own. Oh, you leave it to me, sir. I'll manage her just as I manage my patients. Have you looked over the stuff, Sir Humphrey? I don't see any resemblance, your wife. Oh, maybe not, but my patience is a bit of a beauty when I married her. Why, I remember... This won't do, Merlin. It's not enough. No, sir, it's not quite what we look for. Better luck next time, eh, Sir Humphrey? And we could do with it. The men are getting a bit impatient, like. Oh, I can deal with them all right, but they're asking where the money goes. They say they want more. What for? Rot their innards out sooner with a blue rain, you sell them. Listen, Merlin, I want more. I know what to do with money when I have it. That's why I must have it. Do you understand? I must have it. Yes, sir. Anything more this week while the weather still holds? Perhaps tomorrow, you'll know in time. I've been thinking about your wife's niece, Merlin. It seems a pity to bundle her off before she's seen anything of the county. I've nothing against her stopping. Provided, of course, she's kept out of the way. Yeah. Up to your rooms, both of you. Patience, take a supper upstairs. Now try and sleep, dear. You must be tired. Good night. You was right, Joss. See that? Best part of 15 pound in gold. What did I tell you? You've got yourself in a pretty mess, Mr. Traherne. What have you got to say? Give me a drink. Choking gives you a thirst. Thomas, I'm sure you'll oblige the gentleman. Seems I'm a good guesser, Mr. Traherne. How'd you get it? Safe. You mean you've been selling stuff on the side? I'm ashamed of you, Mr. Treher, that's what I am. Taking the bread out of the mouths of your pals. There's your leak. Not true. He's making fools of the lot of you. Where do you think the stuff goes? Who gets rid of it? Do you think Joss is in this by himself? Well, go on, ask him, ask him who... That was a cosh. Clean out. The dirty thief. Yes, for it, all right. Ah, he done us, we do him. Well, what are we all waiting for? <whistles> Go in the other room, see if you can find me a nice beam. About uh, six foot two off the floor. Go on. Hold on. I'll see if the women are out of the way. Don't want a lot of squawking. Hurry up! It's a new chap to her. They found this gold on him. Know anything about him? Well, he came from St. Ives a couple of months ago, recommended by a pal. You can't just kick him out, that's obvious. Well, he might talk. The men want to string him up tonight. Really? That's a trifle uh, formal, isn't it? Pistol. Oh, no. Uh, too noisy. Of course, you uh, wouldn't want to alarm your wife's niece. Hmm? 
I suppose it's as good a way as any. Right. No need for you to go. Tell them. I haven't finished talking to you. Harry. Yeah? Get on with it. I'll be down in a minute. All right. Come on, Salvation. Look sharp. Stand back, the rest of you. We don't want any gawpers here. This is private, see? If you want a public hanging, Sid, you won't have to wait long. And you'll get a fine view of it from the best position. Inside the rope. <laughs> <laughs> You're not old enough yet. <laughs> what about Josh? He says to get it over. Is this the place, Harry? That's it. Plenty of clearance. <laughs> Anything worth doing, I say, is worth doing proper. Come on, bring him over here. Let's make a quick job of it before he comes round. I won't be a party to that, Thomas. It's only being kind to him. He won't know nothing about it, Salvation. It's no kindness to send a man into the next world on a worse. It's Ethan. That's what it is, I say. Bring him round with a nip of spirits and give him a fair chance to meditate. I don't like the thought of it, somehow. It's like doing it in cold blood. Uh, come on, he's heavy. What do you say, Harry? I say, shut your misbegotten mouths, both of you. Uh -huh. At it again, Dandy. Grab, grab, grab all the time. We'll spin a coin for them buckles when I say the word. Let's have a light. You mustn't stop here. Get away as soon I as you can. I couldn't leave on patience. Oh, please, you must hurry. There you are, my dear. Been saying good night to patience. Yes, I've been thinking things over. She's a sweet, pretty girl, I said to myself, with a lot of character. It seems a pity to send her away before she's hardly seen anything of the county. She can stay here, I said, just as long as she feels inclined. Joss! Joss! Come down, Joss!
He's been took, Joss. What? Who? Jern. He's been took by the angels. Well, of course he's been took. I know that. But alive, Joss. Alive. Mary, it was you. You set that man free. Listen to me. You must leave Jamaica in now, this minute. Do you hear? There you are. That blasted girl, I'll kill her. For pity's sake, go now. Before Joss comes up. Where's that girl? Where is she? You let her go. Thomas, take this lamp. Look in the stables. Gotta give me a hand. Let's go to the yard. Tell me you don't get a move on. I'll break your arms and legs. Take down and better wait. Don't move. Give me a lamp. Why don't you bring out the lamp? Come on, stay here. Come on. Where? Down by the harbor. I know a place. We'll be safe there for a while. We stay out all night. There's not a sign of either of them. They've got clear. Any luck now? Well, if we don't find them, we'll swing for it like as not. Harry, yeah? take a couple of men down to the coast. Yeah? Thomas, get your brother and any of our chaps you can find in the village. Search the moors. Keep on looking. What are you going to do, Joss? I'm going to take the Bodmin Turnpike. All right. And now it's time for What is Track Thinking? when we get a glimpse into the brilliant workings of the mind of Count Dracula. So, Drac, what are you thinking? You see that? He's so deep in thought, he didn't even hear me talking to him. Drac, what are you thinking? Huh? What are you thinking? Oh! Oh, sorry! You know, I was, I was just wondering, you know, because it's baseball season. Right. Right? Mm -hmm. Now, let's say there's a guy up at bat, okay? And the pitcher, he throws him like a hundred mile an hour fastball right down the middle of the plate. And that guy at the plate, he swings and he hits a line drive right down first baseline. And since the ball was coming in so fast, when he hits it, the ball picks up even more momentum and goes down that baseline like a bullet, okay? And before the first baseman can react, okay, that ball hits him right in the head, right in the forehead right there. So hard that it crushes his skull, okay? And it gets stuck right there in his skull, right in the middle of his forehead, okay? Now, this is what I want to know. Is the batter out, or does he get to take second base on interference? You're asking me? Yeah. I'm not sure. Any baseball aficionados out there? Let us know what the ruling would be on the field, okay? Look into that for us. Okay. So there you have it. Another glimpse into the brilliant workings of Drac's mind. We'll see you again soon for another episode of What is Drac Thinking? And you know what I bet? Regardless of what the call on the field is? Yes. I bet that really hurt. Yeah, I would think so. Yeah, yeah. Chadwick! It's very late, sir. She was a very charming girl, Chadwick. I didn't mention it before, sir, but the butcher was here while you were at dinner. He wants his accounts set. Remarkably unattractive occupation, Chadwick. Drearily dismembering carcass after carcass. Oh, I suppose they must live, sir. 
Rusty? It was nearly 40 pounds owing to the butcher, 35 to the baker. You see, sir, butcher, baker. Don't! Butcher and baker man, you old numbskull! Sorry, uh, Chadwick, what? Doing your duty. That's all, Master Humphrey. These outbursts of mine are quite inexcusable. I can't think what comes over me. Hey, by the way, Chadwick, what happened to uh, my grandfather? Yes, went mad, didn't he, huh? Uh, no need for you to uh, hang about, Chadwick. Go to bed. Hmm. How dare you come here to me? Haven't I told you a score of times? Yes, but, but Treherne's got away. That girl set him free. I couldn't help it. It's while I was with you. What have you uh, done with her? She's gone too. Oh, uh, a general exodus, apparently. You uh, persuaded uh, your wife to remain, I hope. The men are out looking for them now. We're doing our best. Is that all you came here to say? I'm sorry, Squire, but that chapter her knows too much. If he was to inform against me and the others... You're losing your head, Merlin. Even if Traherne lives to do any informing, he'll do it here. I'm the only justice in the neighborhood. If you can't keep your wits about you, would you kindly allow me to keep mine? If I didn't, you'd never see another wreck. And the brains are out. The body dies, Merlin. And I needn't remind you that in this little organization, you and your fellows are only the carcass. The uh, brains are here, what? I'm sorry, I was only trying to warn you. Will you let me do the warning? If you want any more fat pickings on the shore, you just obey orders. And don't come here again. Get out! Get out! Don't be a fool. You'll never get anywhere. You can't even row. Leave me alone! You're not afraid of me. Oh, you are. Well, that's women for you. Save your life one minute, frighten for their own the next. Yes, I'm not a very pretty sight at the moment, but I don't bite you. Do you think I don't know how my aunt is frightened for her life? That I don't know what you and the rest of you are doing at Jamaica Inn? Oh, uh, what? Thieves, smugglers, cutthroats for all I know, and I'm not staying! brother to take you for a nice row. Do you follow me? Uh -huh. Can I go too, Harry? I saw it first. No, you cut back and tell Joss everything's lovely. Go on, run. Dandy, you go and get some rope. Uh -huh. This way. I 
what you've done. Tide's going out now, but it'll be high water again before dark. We can't stay here without that boat. Oh, well, we'll have to run for it, that's all, soon as the tide's low enough. Yeah, trust me to land myself with a woman. On the other hand, of course, you did save my life. I hope you make better use of it in the future. Yeah, well, that's a tall order for a desperate character like me. No doubt. A smuggler and a cutthroat, I think you said. Very likely. Do you think there's any hope for me? Tell me, what ought I to do? Anything you please. Well, I used to be a sailor. I could go back to sea. I'm not in the least interested. You must be. Don't forget you're responsible for I am not. Oh, yes. But for you, I shouldn't be here at all. You can't deny that. So you see, when we're safe in Truro, I shall put myself entirely in your oh, hands. Oh, please be quiet. Oh, cheer up. We'll be there by... Take the little book, Mr. Trian. There's a beautiful hymn on page 13. While at death's door I trembling stand. Very comforting. Bricks dying a pleasure, so he says. Name some couple they make, Bricks. We ought to disturb them. Coming down! Will you send the lady up first, or do you fancy the trip yourself? Ladies first, I always say. What can we do? They know we're stuck. Must have seen the boat drift out. Just in case you'd like a bit of help, Mr. Treherne, your old friend Thomas is coming down to offer his arm. Anymore, we're fond of company. You'll get it all right, never you fear. It'll be a pleasure, Harry. Come on, who's it to be? We are Belcher. Grab this. Slip it round the bit of rock. Quick. Do you hear that? There's only one way out of this. Can you swim? Just to please you, Mr. Treherne, so you won't feel lonely, we're all three coming down. Please don't trouble with me. I said, can you swim? I tell you, I'll only be in the way. It'll be hard enough for you getting away alone. I'll be all right. Just stay and harm me. Can you swim? A little. Take off that dress. What? And your shoes, quick. But I can't do that. Take it off. I can't. All right, then I will. No, you won't. I will. Oh, I'm pretty glad when this little job's over. We've been up all night. Yes, it'll be nice to get the boat. What about the girl, Harry? Did we hand her over to Joss? Come on. Now, Mr. Trahan. That's the spirit. You're doing fine. <laughs> That's funny. <laughs> First time I've seen a woman swimming. Oh, it's, it's salt! Look, you see the boat coming this way. Quick, those rocks. Hold on to my shoulder. You all right? Darland, haven't got a taste of that slow gin of yours this year. Now then. I'm three pounds short, Squire Pengallon. Now, Darland, I told you... Squire Davis, Darland, I want money just as you do. I can't be Squire Pengallon on nothing. Why are you uh, three pounds short? That lad of mine, he went down with a bad leg and it won't heal. Take him to Dr. McIntosh at Bodmin, give the doctor my compliments, ask him to take a look at the leg. Pay the three pounds next time. Thank you, Squire. Give him a receipt, Davis. But, Sir Humphrey, I won't... A receipt, it's... Davis. Please remember, this man's forefathers were farming Pengallon land, and yours were hedge tinkers. Next. Where can we go? Which way? We'd best make for the turnpike. Wait, what house is that over there? The Squires. You mean Sir Humphrey? Yeah. I know him. I was there last night. He'll be glad to help us. Come on. Good. This is the fellow I mentioned, Sir Humphrey. Birdkin, a rank radical. Birdkin. Uh, well, Birkin, I come to complain. I want my rights. Your rights? I don't listen to that sort of talk. You have the law on my side. You haven't. I'm the law here in Pengallon, and you haven't me on your side and won't have while you take that turn. Next thing you'll be telling me, you're as good as I am. Well, I'm a man. 
Same as you. Put that out of your head, my friend, before it lands you in the hulks. Well, not as good as I am and never will be. Nature was against it from the start, and everything else has been against it since. I'm a gentleman. Oh, you great... Have him roll out, Davis. Um, don't give him uh, 24 hours. If you please, Squire Pengallon. Why, if it isn't Greenwich or Marley. Uh, yes, Your Honour. It's my roof. I've complained to Mr. Davis about it, but he takes no notice. And it's leaking all the time now. Give her a new roof, Davis. What's a hump for you now? I said a new roof. She's my oldest tenant. Hmm? While I'm here, she'll be snug. Oh. Forget I'm the only man under the rank of Marquis who ever gambled ten years at White's Club and kept his estate out of the hands of the moneylenders. <laughs> and while I've a roof, she shall have one. I must be so hungry. What's this? I told you, any time I came here, you to let me in. It's very important. My dear child, what on earth's happened? You're, 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 you're soaked to the skin. Chadwick, get Mrs. Black and close the door. Come to the fire. Uh, well, tell them to go now, Davis, some other time. But you're positively a blue with cold. Uh, what's, what's happened? Where have you been? Swimming. For our lives. Uh, uh, who, uh, who is this? This is Jem Traherne. We got away from Jamaica Inn last night. It's a horrible place. I think it's nothing better than a den of smugglers. They'd have murdered him there last night. She saved my life, sir. <laughs> this is extraordinary. Sir Humphrey, we need your help. My aunt's still there. If you only knew... Yes, yes, you must tell me the whole story. But first of all, we must find you some dry things or you'll catch. Hold on, Mrs. Black. Take this young lady upstairs. You see if you can find her something to wear. Very good, sir. Will you come this way, miss? Could I speak to you for a moment, please? Of course. Well, then. Well, uh, we, uh, see what we can do. Hmm? Thank you, you're very kind. Not at all. Fate of most disastrous chances. Moving accidents by flood and field of hairbreadth scapes in the imminent deadly breach. What? Captain Murray will send dinner. I should like to, Sir Humphrey, you keep the best table in Cornwall. Yeah, I should hope so. Why go? I'm due to rejoin my ship at Falmouth this afternoon. Mm. By the time you've finished your port and walnuts tonight, I shall be sailing past the house. Well, yes, you will. Sir Humphrey, I must have a word with you. Well, uh, in private. There's uh, nothing you can tell me these gentlemen shouldn't know. One of a gang of uh, smugglers from Jamaica Head, huh? Smugglers, eh? Have you got any good brandies through? Well, yes, as a matter of fact, I've I got a list of them here. Do you uh, kindly remember? I'm a justice of the peace. Nevertheless, <laughs> Sir Humphrey, I think you'll be rather interested in these brandies. Um, uh, gentlemen, uh, I think I must look into this matter in private. Huh? Come along, my dear. I get Ben Gell. If you don't find something good for me, I'll report you to the commission. I'll do it. I place some bread and beer for this person in the harness room. Have you now? Hmm? Place some cold chicken and carrot for this person in the study. Sir? See if you can find some clothes for Mr. Traherne. Mine, I imagine, would be a trifle generous. One of Lord George's would be nearer the mark. Oh, this gentleman... Yes, will you hurry? Hurry! Master Humphrey. My dear sir, I must apologize because I have the least idea who you were. What you want now is a stiff glass of brandy, huh? To your feminine and dry clothes. I'm as awfully obliged. Not at all. Come in. I think I'd better explain that I hold the rank of lieutenant in His Majesty's Royal Navy. Oh. I was seconded for duty from the Home Office. I'm afraid I've been at some pains to conceal my identity. No doubt with good reason, though. I still haven't the least notion what it's all about, but swallows and brandy before you tell me. You know, I've always had a great admiration for the service. And you calling one, well, fine fellow. All fine fellows. A trifle desiccated, perhaps. One can't have everything. Well, 
Now, what is all this business? Uh, smuggling? No, it's much worse than that, Sir Humphrey. Wrecking. Deliberate, organized wrecking. Good heavens, not here, though. Yes, sir. Along this coast. Always had wrecks here, you know. A very dangerous coast. Lloyd's discovered that these wrecks had one curious feature in common. Indeed. Drink that up. I think I'll uh, join you with the brandy. It has been uh, quite a, <coughs> an eventful morning. What uh, had these uh, wrecks in common? There were never any survivors. Uh, Mr. Traherne, if what you tell me is true, it's the most dreadful thing I've ever heard. We hear of wrecks down here, of course. Lloyd is consulted with the Home Office. They became convinced that these wreckers received accurate information of the movements and cargoes of ships passing this. Captain Murray wishes to say goodbye to you, sir. Would you? Excuse me. Just going, Sir Humphrey. Enjoyed myself immensely. On the words, sir, you're a prince. Goodbye, Captain. Bon voyage, huh? Coming back again, sir. Coming again. I shall be thinking of you out there in this wind. I'm sitting over by port tonight, huh? All right. Totally good. Well, uh, Mr. Traherne, uh, kindly uh, continue. My researchers took me to Jamaica in. The landlord Merlin is the ringleader. That wreck last night was carried out by his men. You were actually there? No, thank heaven. I was still on probation. I helped carry the goods up afterwards. Have you, um... Have you reported all this to your superiors? No, not yet. I'm after bigger fry than Joss Merlin. I don't follow you. Um, you uh, said um, he was the ringleader. At Jamaica Inn, yes. But he gets his orders from outside. His information comes from outside. His thinking's done for him outside. By whom? I don't know. Merlin's own wife doesn't know. The gang don't even know. But that's the man we've got to find. Yes, Joss has called them in for tonight. There's to be another wreck. But they won't know where until they get information from their real leader. And in order to give them that information, he'll be going to the inn tonight. We must get there first. No, sir, we can't do that single-handed. If I could borrow one of your horses, I'll ride for help to the nearest garrison. Ah, yes, but that'll take time. We uh, mustn't let this fellow slip through our fingers. How's this? You and I will go to the inn at once. My groom can take a message to the garrison at Truro for you. Well, uh, take some of those. Uh, you say uh, Merlin's riffraff won't be there till later? I fancy we two can hold the fort till the military come. Well, I'm game if you are, sir. Excellent. I see this is positively exciting. Huh? Come in. Chadwick, your money of your life. Oh, no, sir. I've not told Lord John. Oh, who's the commander at Truro? Uh, uh, Captain uh, Boyle. Uh, Irishman, I believe. Good fellow in a pinch. I'll write him a note. No, my dear fellow, I'll do that. Uh, you get into Lord George's britches, if you can, that is, well. To, uh, Captain, uh, Boyle, um, officer, commanding, county, militia, Truro. What shall I, um, say to him? You, uh, know uh, this style of thing? Your help is needed urgently. Your, uh, help? Help, yes, help, uh, is uh, needed urgently. Which is in heaven? Is it there? Or uh, which is in the world? In heaven. Which uh, is uh, over? We give your immediate attention. Have with me an officer of the law, James Trahan. Right, officer of the law, James Appointed to investigate a number of shipwrecks contrived by the wreckers on this coast. Got that? 
Congratulations. Yes. He reports that the wreckers have their headquarters at Jamaica in Pengallon and has enough evidence to hang the landlord and his accomplices. Are you ready? Yes. Miraculous fit. You put Lord George in the shade, huh? Aye, <laughs> aye, better get you a hat. Chadwick! Aye, 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 we, we must leave at once, you know. One moment, sir. The girl, Miss Yellen, she mustn't know about this. Oh, yet. no, 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 uh, that must wait. Uh, poor thing. Evidently devoted to her relative. But I had no choice, Sir Humphrey. I, I couldn't tell her the truth. Oh, uh, Chadwick, uh, will you tell Sam I want him at once? Where is he? In the kitchen, sir. Sam! Uh, you better have a warm cloak. You'll need it in this wind. Chadwick, will you get uh, Mr. Traherne the blue cloak, uh, not the one with the astrakhan collar, get him a hat, and uh, will you get me my cloak and hat? Hmm? Oh, uh, here you are, Sam. Now, Sam... Ride the trail as fast as you can. Deliver that to Captain Boyle at Militia Headquarters. Captain Boyle. Yes, and uh, would you uh, gallop all the way? Very good, sir. And uh, would you be uh, good enough to tell uh, Robbins I want my coach at once? Yes. Come along. Chadwick! <laughs> Oh, thank you so much. Uh, would you uh, tell Mrs. Black uh, uh, to look after the young lady, and if she can persuade her to get a little sleep, uh, so much the better. Thank you so much. And will you make my excuses for me, will you? And uh, tell Lord George I'll be back for dinner. Yes, sir. Oh, thank you so much. Robbins! Where's uh, my coach? Isn't it uh, ready? The young lady came round the back and took it, sir. Oh. What? She said you would order it for her, sir. You'll get it again. Horses, quick, will you? Oh. Gee. I wonder what Mr. Renfield is doing tonight. He's so swell. I wonder if he ever thinks of me. I wonder... I'm Drek, and this is the Bargo Pass Report. Our top story tonight with a uh-oh. Looks like we got breaking newses. And for more on this, we go to our Countess, Karida. Karida? Thanks, Dennis. Sure. Mr. Renfield is swell. Oh, oh, oh. Back to you, Dennis. Boy, he really is. Yeah. In other news, Mr. Renfield is really swell. Oh, he's... Whoa! Looks like we got more breaking newses. For more on this, we go to the darling of the undead. Chuckle Monkey? Thank you. Chuckle. Mr. Renfield is really, really swell. Oh, yeah. Back to you, Dad. Yeah, thanks, honey, Beth. And he sure is. You know, in other news, we're hearing that Mr. Renfield mania is sweeping the planet with people everywhere saying, doggone it, Mr. Renfield is just the swellest guy in the whole world. Yeah. Whoa! Looks like we got even more breaking newses. For more on this, we go back to Countess Carida. Honey Beth? Thanks, Dennis. Sure. We're hearing that swell guy, Mr. Renfield, has just been named King of the World. Back to you, Drac. Whoa! Thank you, babyist. In other Drac, you have a really, really swell guy on hold. You mean the king of the world? Yes, the king of the world is on hold. Well, gee whiz, that swell. Well, we can't keep the king of the world waiting. Put him on through. Hi, master. Oh, oh, please. You can call me Drek. <laughs> really? We were just talking about you. You, you were? Uh, what were you saying? We were just talking about how swell you are, Renfield. There seems to be a lot of that kind of talk going around. We were also talking about how you were just named King of the World. That's swell. <laughs> how did that happen, King Renfield? 
Oh, well, uh, I've been told that they were looking for the swellest guy they could find uh, to be king of the world. And, and, and everybody kept saying I was the swellest guy in the world, so I got the job. Gee, that's swell, isn't it? It sure is. It's really, really swell. So now that you're the swellest king of the world, how do we address you? Oh, you can still address me here at the Sword Sanitarium. No, I mean, what do we call you? Oh, well, most people have been calling me your swellest highness. Okay, so now that your swellest highness is the king of the world, what are you going to do? I'm going to come up with a bunch of royal edicts. You are? Yes, but don't worry, they're all going to be really swell. Well, what will some of these swell edicts be? Well, to begin with, Mondays will now officially begin at 1 in the afternoon. Gee, that's swell. Isn't it? And next, all waist sizes on pants will be marked 6 inches smaller. So if you need pants that have a size 40 waist, you'll now be able to wear a size 34. Wow, that's really swell. I know, right? I feel thinner already. And then there's the bird that I'll name the new symbol. It'll be pictured on flags and coins and stamps. I'm really excited about this, Edith. What bird are you naming the global bird? Why, the rat, of course. Why, of course. And what a swell bird the rat is. Uh, the swellest, and, and they'll be even better once we get them some wings. Uh, I have to go now, Master. <clears throat> uh, oh, uh, I mean Drac. Uh, uh, I have to go. I have some swell royal edicts to sign. Okay. Hey, are you going to put me in your cabinet? No. Y you can still sleep in your coffin. <laughs> Bye. Bye, your swellest Titus. <laughs> Gee, Carita, you didn't even say hello to his swellest highness, that swell King Renfield. I couldn't. I was in awe. Oh, yeah. Well, that's all the time we have for this time. We'll see you next time. Oh, Drac. What, Bob? You have Mr. Renfield on the line? Well, it's a little late, isn't it? What are you talking about? We're out of time here. Well, the goofball says he has something to say. I don't know. Oh, all right. Put him through. <sighs> I'm sorry, Master. I fell asleep and just woke up. I was dreaming. Well, we're out of time. You know, whatever you were going to say, just save it for next time. Oh. Okay. Bye, Karita. <sighs> Bye, Master. Well... We're out of time. We'll see you next time on the Borgo Pass Report. Jeez, how do you like the nerve of that guy? I know, right? Right, yeah. Mm -hmm. Calling in here at the last second like that. You know, mm -hmm. who does he think he is? The king of the world? <laughs> you know? But He's just another fly-eating, spider-eating, rat-eating minion of darkness, you know? Mm -hmm. He's an okay manservant, you know? But even then, I have to tell him everything to do. I know. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. It's like he doesn't have a brain of his own. Which may be a good thing. Yes. Some of the things I've asked him to do. Uh-huh. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> And now, here's an editorial comment from the Borgo Pass News Director, Droucho. Droucho here, the Borgo Pass News Director with an editorial comment. So, it's baseball season. How fondly I recall my days in the majors. I was never in the minors. What do you think I am, a pervert? Don't answer that. The thrill, the excitement, the anticipation of rounding third and sliding in the home. That usually happened on Saturday night around closing time when I was desperate. Let me tell you the story of my favorite time at the plate. It was in the last game of the 
League Championship Series. It was the bottom of the ninth. Two men on, two men out. And I stepped into the batter's box. I took my bat and I pointed out over the center field fence. Ah, what a beautiful sight. For there in the grandstands were all of my one night stands and they had all slipped off their panties and were waving them in the wind like pennants. Some of them were like flags. And if I were going to be completely honest, there were a few tablecloths in there too. But don't judge me too harshly. Those happened on Saturday nights around closing time when I was desperate. So, I got myself into my batting stance and the pitcher let loose with a 100 mile an hour fastball right down the center of the plate. I swung and connected and hit a long fly ball into center field. And at precise moment, at that exact moment, all of my one night stands in the grandstands let go of their panties and they were carried out on the breeze over the outfield. I began to run the bases. I crossed first. I was heading into second. I looked and I saw the center fielder had lost the ball in the sea of panties. I rounded second and headed the third. The third base coach, he gave me the go sign. He told me the center fielder had dropped the ball and couldn't find it. So I rounded third and I slid into home. Unfortunately, I slid head first and knocked myself out on the baseline, about 10 feet short of home plate. The next thing I knew, I was coming to in the team infirmary, being intended to by the team nurse. Ah, she was a young and beautiful thing, and she took pity on me. And that's the night I added another pennant to my grandstands. <laughs> Let that be a lesson to you, fellas. There's more than one way to win a pennant. <laughs> I'm Draucho, the Borgo Pass News Director, and this has been my editorial comment. Now, if you'll excuse me, it's time for the seventh inning stretch. <sighs> ah, Chief Wahoo, they'll always be the Indians to me. I miss you. This has been an editorial comment from the Borgo Pass News Director, Droucho. Come away with me now while there's time. What's happened? That man I cut down, Jem Traherne, was a law officer. No, no. He's on his way here now with Sir Humphrey. They've sent a Truro for help. Joyce. Quick, I must change this dress. Get your things together before they come. I must tell Joyce. There's no time. I tell you, I'll not leave without Joyce. Don't you understand? They know the truth. And I'm patient, so do I. This is your last chance to be free of him. Your last chance. No. He's a wrecker. A murderer. But he's my husband. Oh, Mary, you don't understand. You don't know him. Josh, she's come here to warn us. We must get away. Where's that fella? Where's Traherne? Josh, they're coming for you. Traherne's a law officer. Josh, we can't... Keep quiet. I don't think I need tell you why I'm here with this officer, Mallon. I rather fancy you'll be able to guess. As a magistrate, I demand the right to search your premises. Perhaps you'll show us round, Mr. Mallon. All clear in there, Sir Humphrey. So you're here. How quick of you, Mr. Traherne. But of course, law officers waste very little time. I'm sorry. Come here, if you please, Mrs. Marilyn. But she's had nothing to do with this. I sincerely hope not. Why couldn't you have been honest with me? Why didn't you tell me who you were? So you could have warned your aunt, as you tried to just now. And why not? She's innocent. You needn't be afraid she'll run away. I've tried. But nothing in this world will drive her away from Joss. If that is the case, perhaps Mrs. Merlin would mix us something to drive out the cold. What would you like to her? 
hot brandy for me, if you'd uh, be so kind. Up the stairs, Joss. Joss! Go on, get up. I'm sorry about this, believe me. But try not to worry. We do our best. On patience. You've known about Joss all along. I love him. But People when can't help being what they are. Joss can't, I can't. There's nothing to be done. You could leave him. Even now you could leave him. Mary, go and put the kettle on the fire while I get the brandy. This is where he comes in, up these stone steps. You're expecting a visitor, aren't you, Joss? He comes to one of these rooms, I'm certain of that. I've tried that door, but it's locked. Give me the key. You may as well, I'll break that door down. Don't be a fool, Merlin. Give him the key. Go on, get in. Mind your heads, Humphrey. These doors are rather low. Oh, uh, thank you. Ah, this looks more like it. Never you. What did you say, Merlin? I say it's never used. No, then why is that fire alight? Go right to George. Friends apparently expected very soon. Duty considerate of the fellow. I like a good fire. Hello, here's something. What do you make of it? There's blood on silk. We got silk from last night's wreck. You see, he was here last night. Foolish of you to overlook this, Joss. One might even say careless. See that, Sir Humphrey? There'll be many others, too. Unusual place behind the curtain. Sigal. You've hit it. Would you open the door at the end of the passage? Certainly. Joss, who is it who comes here? Would you like to know? I'll tell you. Santa Claus every Christmas. It'll <laughs> make things a lot easier for you if you tell me. You don't plan these wrecks, Joss. Who does? You'll find out, Mr. Law Officer. All's covered in glass. <laughs> I left the door open for him. Good. What about the signal? Better light it up for him. I'll do that. What about the women? Better bring them up, don't you think? Right, I'll get them. Watch it. You might fetch my toddy up while you're about it. Right. Still blowing? Hard as ever, sir. Take your orders, Mallet. Another wreck tonight? Captain Murray would like to have dined with me. He dislikes the food on shipboard, you know. He was particularly mortified at having to sail past here at dinner time. Which means, let's see, uh, Barnard's head. And a clock or thereabouts. Yes, sir. What are they carrying, sir? Among other things, gold. <whistles> Must make quite certain, Merlin, because I need the money very particularly. If the wind drops after, I'm an indifferent sailor. What? I'm going to take a little holiday. I advise you to do the same. Why, what's happened? Is nothing. Nothing yet. But the authorities sent Mr. Traherne down into Cornwall. You see, they suspect. I shall come back when it's blown over. That is the last one. The uh, last of this series. I shall catch the Falmouth packet uh, tonight for St. Malo. I shall call back on the way. I shall have the golden valuables ready for me. They're uh, extremely fond of such things in France. What about Traherne? When will your men be here? If this is what saving your life has brought us all to, I wish to heaven I'd let you... You don't think I'm enjoying this? Is anything wrong? Oh, no. Our friend made one of his very elementary jokes. Well, I think we're ready for him. I've locked the women in their bedroom. That door's open and the light's in the window. Everything, in fact, except the man himself. Your groom left for Truro just before us, and I'm a quarter there and back. Which means Captain Boyle should be here within the next ten minutes. You see that, Joss? It's your last chance. 
There's only one way you might save your skin. Name the man and tell the whole story. This reminds me, I took the precaution of bringing this warrant for the fellow's apprehension. Of course, his name will have to be filled in later when we know it. Like to write it in for us, Joss? Well, what are you waiting for? You've taken all the risks so far. You and Harry and Salvation and the rest. He saw to that. And what have you got out of it? The bare pickings. Have you thought of that, Merlin? You've a chance to break free of him for good. You could turn King's evidence. Why don't you, Joss? Do you think he'd hesitate in your shoes? No, a man like that would save his own skin first. I think so. He'd sacrifice anybody. You seem to have a very clear picture of him. Tell me, what sort of a fellow do you think he really is? This man deliberately plans not only the wrecking of ships, but the cold-blooded slaughter of any who survive the wreck. He remains aloof, content to hire the scum of the coast to do his murderer's work for him, thinking there's no blood on his own hands, but there is. Heaven help him, there's blood on that man's very soul. I'd like to break the... The minute! Watch it. I'll go down and tell them to surround the place and to lie low till we give the word. We don't want them on view here. Here we are. Damn you! Sir Humphrey! Look out for the gang are here! He's got somebody with him! Get out of the back, you two, see nobody gets outside! Sir Humphrey! I'm just one minute too late. I'm watching the back. Oh, there's no other way. What can we. Are you up there, Joss? Joss! Squire Pengallon. That's right, Harry, our respected Justice of the Peace. Brought here by your pal, Mr. Trehearn, who forgot to tell you he's a law officer. What's that? <laughs> what do you think? They came here to hang us over the wreck. We'll make a real job of it this time. Come on. Hold on. We gotta go careful, Harry. What's the matter? We don't want our much respected justice of the peace found here dead. People might talk. He won't be found. But he might be missed. Maybe they knew he was coming here. We've got to finish him, Josh. Surely we have, but that takes a little thinking over, and there's no time for that now, you see. We're doing another wreck. Tonight? Nine o'clock. We'll fix them when we come back. Uh, get a couple of ropes there. Come on, Dan. Cheers. No, I'll do him. It'll be a pleasure. Do you think I came here just for you, you fools? I told you before there's somebody behind Joss. Joss knows it. If you wait here long enough, you'll see him. He's coming here tonight. You shut your gun. Blame for time, are you? You'd like to see us miss that wreck we're doing tonight, wouldn't you? Well, we wouldn't miss it for worlds, see? <laughs> Joss finished trusting his worship. Let's make him nice and snug. And while we're away, we've got to think of a nice little accident for you. Now, what would your worship fancy? A choice coach over the cliffs? Or perhaps you'd sooner be caught by the tide with our friend Jem here on a nice, comfortable, cosy part of the beach. That's it. In death they shall not be divided. I warn you all of you, if you lay a finger on either of us, you'll pay for it. You know it'll come to you. You'll end swinging in the wind at execution dock with a coat of tar to keep the weather out. Your time we went. Well, who's going to stay with them? We can't leave them here without somebody. What about salvation? <laughs> he can talk to Mr. Treherne about eternity. Uh, him? <laughs> not me. We'll need all hands down on the shore. Patience will watch him. Run upstairs and fetch the women. The lock's in the bedroom. I'm sorry to see you here, Willie Penhale. I told you when you were up before me for perching last year, you were falling amongst evil companions. You see, I was right. You should have listened to me, my boy. Well, it looks as though your wish is going to come true. You might just as well have left me where you found me. What's she doing here, Joss? Well, she came here to warn us, Harry. Well, that's handsome of her, I must say. She started the whole thing. I don't see I why... I look after her, Harry. I got a nice job for your patience, my dear. Take this and watch the two gentlemen. But you can't leave a woman in charge, Joss. I tell you, I'll leave a lot of you down to the beach. They're well tied, aren't they? Besides, this will be all the better for a finger that's nervous-like on the trigger. I shouldn't move your worship, bearing that in mind. You wouldn't like your suit spoilt with a bullet hole, I'm sure. Don't be frightened, my dear. You'll have no call to use it, most likely. Come on, look lively now. Patience, you can't let this happen. You can't leave them like that. Stop to be you. Murdered. You're coming on with us. Take your hands off her, Joss. You can't take it to the wreck. Joss! Oh, of course not, Mr. Trehearn. I'm going to leave her behind to cut you loose for the second time in 24 hours. Come on now. 
Helen, you'll answer to me for her safety. Yes, Your Worship. What's happened to the military? Where the devil have they got? Something must have delayed them. If it only come, there might be a chance to save the wreck. That'd be difficult, you know. We don't know where it's going to be. So, Humphrey, I'll tell you something. Our man came here, but he left before us. How do you mean? He must have done, otherwise Joss wouldn't have known about the wreck. I warn you, Mrs. Merlin, if Captain Boyle finds you like that, nothing will save you. It is very annoying. I told Chadwick I'd be back for dinner. Now, Mrs. Merlin, I wonder if that pistol's loaded. Probably you're inexperienced in these things. Would you like me to have a look at it? That's no good, sir. That'll never work. Very well, Mrs. Merlin. See if it's properly primed. I'm afraid you're not fully conversant with the real facts of the situation. I know your husband better than you do. I think he would no more have loaded that pistol than he would have left me helpless. It would have been quite absurd. Now, Mrs. Mellon, I've always admired your devotion to your husband. The woman shall cleave to the man, even if the man is our friend Joss, admirable. Now, if this officer should escape, your husband will pay for it with his life. So I needn't stress the importance of the task I'm giving you. There. Watch him. Closely. There's the slightest chance of him getting free. Don't hesitate to shoot him. Just get firm pressure on the trigger, Mrs. Merlin. On the trigger. And all will be well. No. You've forgotten one thing, Pentgillan. The note I said to Captain Boyle. There's still the military to reckon with. There is no Captain Boyle. In consequence, there'll be no military. Mrs. Merlin, you've got to let me go. Quick. Please, don't move. Where's the wreck going to be? I don't know. You can't let it happen. You must set me free. Innocent men and women are going to die and you'll be responsible. You love your husband, I know that. And I know it's my duty to take him if I can. But the men on that ship have wives too. Think of that. Think of yourself if Joss was on board. That ship sailing down from Falmouth in the gale. Somewhere on the shore, a beacon is going out. Can you see the rest? The ship shuddering and striking. Her men spread out in the yards like flies, clinging to the rigging, screaming at the sight of the surf. And after the wreck, the wolves. That's why you must let me go. That's why you must tell me where that wreck is. I can't. I can't. I don't know, I tell you. I've never known. Mrs. Merlin. Let me go now and I'll find out where it is. Hurry, there's hardly time. I can't. What will happen to Joss? You must make a choice. The lives of those men and of other men in the future are the life of Joss. After all, Joss is only one man. Yes, but he's my man. Mrs. Merlin, supposing I allow your husband... Woo! 
Where's the nearest minute of gas? Don't mean what? I want your coat. Give me those reins in the name of the law. Here's my lot. Chadwick, I don't know how long my business will take me. I may be away for some weeks. I think that'll be all. Very good. Sir Humphrey, sir. What is it, uh, Sam? I couldn't deliver this note, sir. The regiment left Tudor for Bodmin three weeks ago. It did. And nobody's heard of any Captain Boyle. So, uh, Shall I try Bodmin, sir? No, uh, no, no. It's of no importance. I think that'll be all, Chadwick. I can't give you my address in France. Uh, what? Well, uh, uh, Chadwick, huh? You'll pardon the liberty. You're not ill. Ill, Chadwick? Ill? I've never felt better in my life. Come here. Fact is, I'm, uh, growing, uh, younger. Come here. So, uh, much younger. 
taking a beautiful uh, young girl with me on the travels, huh? Yes, sir. Is there anything more? Yes, sir, fool. Don't stand there with that look in your eyes. Sam. Sir. Uh, keep the mare in bay in good condition, won't you? And uh, come here. Now watch Chadwick. His uh, mind's going. Oh, yes, Drive on, will you? Chadwick, he's, um... Our patients, our patients! Our patients, our patients! Mary! Joss, what's happened? Joss is hurt! Careful, Joss. Joss! Mary! my dear. You're all right, Joss. I'm taking care of you. You're a good girl, Patience. I'm sorry. Where's Jim? Aunt Patience, he's not. I set him free. He went to find the rest. Mary, he... Promise me he'd let Joss escape. You know what that means? We can leave here. We can leave here together, Joss and I. You must help me, Mary. We must go quickly while we can. Mary will begin again. Think of it. To be able to live without fear among different people who don't know us. Yes, Auntie. It'll be like those first days in Bodmin. Joss was different then. He's strong. He'll soon get better. Won't he? Of course. In a moment, when he's recovered a little, we must move him. We can't wait. Joss mustn't be here when, when he comes back. Who? Oh, Mary, I haven't told you. Didn't know myself until tonight. But I've always known Joss wasn't his own master. There's someone else, Mary. Someone who planned the wrecks and had Joss in his power. Tonight I found out who. Mary, it's... <laughs> Give me a drink. Yes, Joss, yes. shot, wasn't it? I'm sorry, poor creature. She has suffered so much. But I was forced to do it. You see, she was going to tell you about me. I didn't like that. I wanted to tell you myself. So you stopped the wreck? Pity I was counting on it. You're a very brave young lady, but you've made my position very difficult. Please don't scream like that. I shall have to put this handkerchief in your mouth. You must tell me if that hurts. Of course you can't. How silly of me. Put your hands down. Put your hands down. But I shall have to tie them up too. Hmm. This will prevent the cord from cutting your wrists. You see, you're quite alone now. You have no one else in the world except myself. So I'm uh, going to take care of you. Uh, in fact, uh, we are going uh, away together. We uh, should be going now. Uh, Traherne may come back. You'd better put uh, this on. It's wise to wrap up well. While this cold wind's blowing, I'm always telling people they can't be too careful, but they, they think they know better. 
And uh, you uh, wouldn't want people to see you like that, would you? But, uh, I'm uh, glad you're quiet now. Uh, come along. My coach is not far away. <laughs> we must hurry. We must hurry. with him. But Joss, what about Joss? Come on. Trian's gone too. Joss. 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 Harry, here, quick. Dead. Both of them. You shouldn't have done that to Joss, Harry. If you ask me, it's uh, time we moved on. What are you all standing there for? Get out! And don't keep together. Scatter! Come down! Come down. Now, where's that girl? It's a question. Come on, now, where is she? Tell me. Take it calm now, take it calm. You're going to be disappointed, Mr. Treherne. She's gone and found herself another gentleman. I just see her sneaking off alone with his worship. Squire. We've got to find them, Captain. We'd better have half a dozen men. Sergeant, I've got six men to ride with Mr. Treherne and myself. I don't like it. I don't like it at all. It was breaking that, that bit of looking glasses, did it? I told you, seven years bad luck. No, darling, not more than seven days, not counting eternity. What will he do? What's going to happen to us? Oh, it will be a proper public execution with the women watching. I'll make them sit up. I'm ready. I'm ready. That won't do, will it? Better tie him up. Why are you doing that? Why can't I be chained? Stop. Stop, I want to be chained like the others. Listen to me. I've got a right to be. I'm the same as them. I've done what they've done, haven't I? I want to hang with them. Yes. You'll hang me. I don't want to hang. I don't want to die. Not yet. I'm only a boy. I'm only 17. You won't let them, will you? I only did what I was told. I never killed anybody. I never even went near the wrecks. So you can't hang me. You must. You dare. Because I don't want to die. I don't want to That's my house, do you see? Across the bay. Pink gallons have been there a long time. I may never see it again. Of course, you see, we may never be able to come back. We may be going a long way, you know. Near to the sun, of course, Italy, perhaps, the Isles of Greece. You thinking uh, that'll cost money? But there, I have enough. One must have enough. I always knew that to live like a gentleman, spaciously and with elegance, one must have money. And a few beautiful possessions, of course, like you, my dear. Where's the Humphrey? Sir Humphrey has gone away on business, sir. Where? May I ask? Answer, man, answer. Sir Humphrey is taking the Falmouth night packet to St. Marlowe. I say, I say, what's this? Oh, it's you. Good heavens! My suit. These gentlemen are inquiring for Sir Humphrey, well, What sir. do you want it for? Is something wrong? Sir Humphrey's the head of a band of wreckers who are under arrest at Jamaica Inn.
I put your luggage below, sir. Humphrey Pangala, the large stateroom. You the steward? Yes, sir. Get the uh, bottle of brandy. Very good, sir. This way, sir. Follow me. Miserable hole. Best they've got. <laughs> Old traveller, though. I'll make you comfortable. Never really cared for wrecking. After all, they're not my kind of thing, hobnobbing with cutthroats. It had to be done. Half my friends living like paupers, but I'm living like a prince. Hmm. Drowned uh, hundreds of sailors to do it. Make a princess out of you. <laughs> I believe you're sorry because you're not marrying some oaf. Put father on you, uh, a dozen snivelling, dirty nosed brats. <laughs> Any uh, man of sensibility would rather see you dead first. In Paris, sir, you'll have your woman to attend you. And I'll see to your new clothes myself. Mm, yes, I'll dress you, my dear. And we'll put uh, silk next to that smooth skin of yours. Mm? <laughs> Pale green silk, I think. Well, <laughs> mm. <laughs> stop crying. Stop it, you little fool. Be beautiful. Oh, hard as nails if you like, but you must be beautiful. Well, you have to be hard now. The age of chivalry is gone. The glory of Europe is extinct. Three are back. Back to the quayside. Well, they uh, may be coming for you. Of course, you can't go with them. <coughs> You've done that, my child. There's a lot of riffraff about. Things might be most unpleasant. from him as far as you can. No, no, don't shoot. He can't help himself. He doesn't know what he's doing. He's mad, I tell you, mad! Safe here. doing up there.
<laughs> Time flies. That's our show for tonight. We hope you enjoyed our movie, Jamaica Inn. Now we'll see you next time. And until then, remember, fly okay. right. So, Dennis, hmm? when you were on that cruise and stole that woman's heart... You mean the one I use as a paperweight? Yeah, that one. Yeah. Did you steal anything else? Mm -hmm. Well, I, I did steal the brain of a, a Rhodes Scholar. Really? Yeah. Well, sure, that's what we use as a doorstop. Oh, okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Academians. <laughs> you know what I mean? Mm. <laughs> yeah, they sound smart when they talk and everything, but, you know, when it comes down to, like, true life and common sense. Common sense. sense. Yeah. Yes. They're denser than a box of rocks, you know? Which, since it's rocks, you know, right. and it's that big, right, that's what makes it a good doorstop. Exactly. Yeah. Hey. Again, we'll see you next time. And until then, not only fly right, but tell all your friends to join us, too. We'll look forward to it. <laughs>